All right. Well, hey, welcome everybody to another Tech Tip Tuesday night here on July 5th, the day after our Independence Day celebration. How many of you guys were out doing the 4th of July thing yesterday, right? I, I was. Awesome holiday. Great reason to celebrate, right? Your independence, our independence, our freedom. Love it. So welcome, welcome, welcome for all you guys that are brand new. And hello again for all you guys that are uh, regulars and old timers. Appreciate you being here. Uh, this is a Tech Tip Tuesday call. What we do here, this is a live chat forum in which we will pull in questions from the chat. Uh, we will do our very best to unpack them and solve the mysteries. I am accompanied by my awesome co-host, Jake Barron. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Hey, Ken. How are you doing, everyone? Welcome, welcome. And we have in the customer from the customer service department, we have Anthony in the background tonight, right? Hey, Anthony. Yeah, so Anthony, Anthony is one of the amazing members of our tech support team. And um, he this is actually his first Tech Tip Tuesday call that he's um, helped out with. He he joined us back in January. So he's been with us for about six months now and he's done an awesome job. And we're happy to have him start helping out on, on these calls as well. So what, what Thank an, you, honor, an honor to have you here tonight, Anthony. Thank you for your help in the background. Um, you know, it's always appreciated. So everybody make sure you tell him howdy and thank you for being here. So let me introduce myself. I am Ken Close. Hi, Anthony. There he is <laughs> live. And, and here we are. Um, so you want to say hi to everybody, Anthony? Come on up. Say hello. Hello, everyone. Sorry for the waiting. Yeah. It's all right. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. <laughs> Great to put a face with the name and the voice and the lightning fingers in the background. <laughs> so, uh, so my name's Ken Close. I am a member of Healy, just like most of you guys here. Um, Jake and Anthony are from corporate. Um, I have, I bring my background, expertise, and experience to the table as an electronics engineer, as well uh, as a Healy pioneer for about, uh, oh gosh, over two and a half years now. Um, I will do my best to give you as much experience and knowledge as I can. Uh, Jake is an awesome uh, source of knowledge as well. And then Anthony um, is in the background in the chat. So here's what we can do. We can talk about the blue dot, the pink dot, um, the technology. We can talk about all kinds of things around the philosophy, but what we can't talk about is how to treat, diagnose, or prevent any disease, disorder, or dysfunction. Um, that's not what we can do here. So um, please don't ask questions about what program for what condition. Uh, we have the Heal Advisor search app for that, right? That's an amazing tool for us to use. So with that, um, let's get this party started, everybody. What questions do you have for us tonight? And you know, if we don't get any questions, we're gonna make stuff up. <laughs> Let's see. Jake, anything that, uh, or maybe even Anthony, I mean, um, is there anything that has been coming through as a standard issue or problem people are experiencing that we might wanna talk about? Well, I mean, we, we've still got, you know, we don't have a permanent fix yet for the, the issue with the, the Healy Pink Dot app um kind of looping back to the main menu that's been an ongoing thing for for some people and you know typically um a, a delete um deleting the app uninstalling it restarting the phone um reinstalling it again typically will fix it but it's it's not always permanently you know it could pop back up again so you know that that is there's a way around it which, which is good and also to, you can also put your phone into airplane mode turn off wi-fi um, and just connect to it that way as well. Um, but as far as a permanent fix, that's still still being uh, worked on um, at this time. Yeah, and Anthony put something in the chat there about um, that the green light will turn off after the program has been transferred to the Healy hardware, but the blue light stays on, meaning that let's just talk about the, the lights for a moment and what they signify and uh, what you're seeing uh, based on their flashing or, or absence. Um, so uh, in the description as to what Anthony said, the, the green light um, is your power indicator. When you press the uh, power button, the green light starts to flash and it flats, flashes at a rate of one flash per second. If you press that power button and you get five really quick flashes and then it goes off, that means the battery's dead. Okay, so 
Um, I had people ask me the question, say, hey, my Healy's broken. I get five quick flashes and it goes off. It won't come back on. It keeps doing that. It needs to be charged. So you plug the Healy in, the green light comes on solid. Uh, and then you, about 90 minutes later, uh, it's fully charged and the green light goes off. That means you can unplug it and it's ready to go. So when you turn that power switch on for the very first time, green light starts to flash at one flash per second. Uh, then you go and open your app on your smart device and you connect to Healy. When you choose the, I have a Healy and then the next window is connect to Healy, uh, it then sends a signal out to the Healy to look for a very specific Bluetooth signal. Um, so you'll notice the Bluetooth light won't come on until that pairing begins. So you don't have to go into your settings and do anything with the Bluetooth settings. It, as long as it's on, it'll make that, that connection. Um, and then uh, it's going to ask you to scan the QR code, right? At scan the QR code, then it makes the connection, and now you're able to use your Healy. So the green light um, has essentially four positions or four indicators, off, right? That means it's off. Flashing five times quickly then off, that's a dead battery thing. A flash of one flash per second, that's an activated thing. Um, and then a solid indicator, meaning it's either charged or you've done the reset. It's either charging or you've done the reset process. So that's kind of a cool thing about the, the green light. The blue light, that's just Bluetooth. It just flashes when it's active. That's it. Okay. Anything you guys want to add to the light indicators? No, I guess because I was related to that question um, right above. I think I guess it looks like you're answered it <laughs> all the different scenarios there. Um, but you know, a lot of people depending on which app they're running, if they're running a program with the Pink Dot app or the, the Analyze app, and they might see, not be paying attention. And then sometimes they look at it and like, okay, like right now I'm running a program um, in the Pink Dot app and my green light's flashing and my Bluetooth light's flashing because I'm connected to the app and there's a program being um, run right now at this time. And if I were to turn off the Bluetooth chip or whatever, that Bluetooth light would go off, but the program would continue to run with the green light um, flashing there until that program finishes. So um, yeah, I mean, think for, for a lot of people, you know, you, you might, you might think, you know what it's doing. Then all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, is that, is that how it's, is that supposed to be doing that <laughs> right now? Um, cause you know, you, a lot of times you don't really pay attention to it. So. Yeah, it's fun. I, I did a lot of analysis in the function of all the hardware, even the, the apps. I watched every single frequency during a program to see watched uh -huh. what what was what showed up how they reoccurred when the progress report began i mean all the analysis i spent a lot of hours um in trance with healy so understanding that green light was one of the first things to understand i needed to know yeah. um and and marjorie is asking about this uh that someone a client says that their green light doesn't flash though it appears that the program is running on their cell phone so if you if you look at your cell phone and a program is actually running, it must be connected to a Healy. All right. Now, if you have two Healy sitting there, here's the key, here's the thing. If you have one plugged in somewhere, the app, you know, you have one in your hand and one plugged in somewhere, the app may try to find the one that's it's that's turned on. And when you have your Healy plugged in, it's actually turned on. And so it will try to find that. Now, the problem with with if you try to choose a pink dot uh, program and try to send it to the Healy that's turned on that is plugged in, it will say no. Function can't happen while it's plugged in. And you'll actually notice that you're connected to a Healy that's plugged in by the battery charge indicator at the top right of the screen. It'll be red, right? And normally it's, it's not red. <laughs> it's black and it tells you the percentage of it, right? So, uh, but when it's red, that means it's, plug it's, it's connected to a Healy that's plugged into a charger. And so it will not be able to transfer a program to that Healy. It will not be able to run a program to that Healy. So, uh, so if you have, if, if your app is turned on um, and it's apparently read, running a program, it's got to be connected to a Healy. It won't run a program in the pink dot um, without it being connected to a Healy. So I would examine that particular member's um, flashing light and the app itself 
Sometimes if it's out in the daylight, it's hard to see that little light, right? The light, background light's too much, you won't see it. Okay. Um, let's see, Amy's asking, this is not a tech question, but who made the techno jam it plays at the end of the programs? I love it. <laughs> I mean, of course, of course, Marcus made that techno jam. I mean, come on. <laughs> right, right. That'd be yeah. fun if we could like put some custom sounds at the end of that. Yeah, so. maybe we can get like an extended version, you know, a couple minutes long or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's funny because you sit in a crowded room of Healy people and there's that little tune going off everywhere <laughs> when people are getting done with their programs. Oh, there's another one going off, right? <laughs> mm. What else we got? It's kind of a quiet evening. I, I It's kind of a, a, a yeah. nice little break after the holiday, right? <laughs> okay, here we go. Let's see. New replacement device. I've had it for about two weeks. The charging light came on at about 39%, but previous ones I needed to charge at less than 15%. So the, I guess she's saying the she got the five flashes when the battery was around 39%, but this is a new replacement device. It sounds like maybe the battery's not calibrated yet at this point. What do you think, Ken? Yeah, yeah, so let's, uh, what I'd recommend is we do a, a hard reset. Um, we do a battery calibration reset. So what that means is that you, press and hold the power button uh, for about eight seconds or at least until the green light comes on solid and then release it. It'll stay on solid for about another three or four seconds and then it goes off. So that's what's called a hard reset. Um, and then go ahead and plug the Healy in and leave it alone uh, until that green light goes off completely. Now, again, it may be in the middle of your day or whatever, just strategically plan it. Um, and then use it again, test it out. Uh, what that does, that kind of resets the algorithm that if you'll notice, obviously, that the Healy itself, the Healy hardware is not connected to your smartphone anyway. So how is it measuring the battery life on the Healy? Well, it's no different than, say, your smartwatch, right, or your, your earbuds or anything else that is uh, a wireless entity uh, that's interfacing with your smart device. It uses a mathematical equation, <laughs> And so with the Healy though, uh, you've got to recalibrate that sometimes it can get off. So this is how you do it. Do the hard reset on the Healy, uh, let it charge fully, plug it in, let it charge fully, and then give it a, another test drive. If you still find that be, to be a problem, then the next thing I want you to do is to plug the charger in and then do that same hard reset. And the reason I wanted you to do that hard reset without it plugged in, so you can actually understand about how long you have to hold the button um, because when you plug the Healy in, that light, that green light's going to come on. So pressing and holding the button is not going to change the indicator. The green light's going to be hot and solid. So you just kind of have to time it in your head. Press and hold, eight seconds, let go, and then leave it, leave it to charge. What that does is resets it when it's plugged in to also, again, clear some of that content. Uh, and, then, and then let it charge fully and test it again. You may have to do this more than once, by the way. Yeah, Anthony mentioned in the chat there that it takes a few cycles until it's it's properly calibrated. So, yeah. yeah. And if you just if you just did a hard reset yesterday, chances are you haven't gone through full charging cycles again um, for it. So I would you know deplete fully deplete the battery, fully charge the battery overnight. I mean, do that a few times, and then you know check back in with us next week on the call and let us know how it's going. And when you get it set right, I mean, mine mine goes all the way down to zero percent. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, really down to zero yeah. percent. And then I'm just waiting for it to go off, you know, and it's, it usually finishes the program, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, so she said, I, I, I did the hard reset yesterday. So, yeah, so go ahead and run that cycle a couple of times. Uh, this is one of the common things, you know, I remember when we I first got started with Healy was um, one is that actually turning the Healy on was a challenge people were this is a this is actually a um it's a smart reset so in other words if you you have you have about one second to press and hold press and release just one second if you press for two seconds and release you've actually gone from the from the off to on to off function so in other words it won't be on so you've held the button too long and it'll just not stay on so um, i had a lot of people doing that 
you know, they're pressing the button too long and it would either go into a uh, hard reset mode or because it held it for eight seconds or it would just go off and on and then not, not be on again. All right. Um, let's see. So you, there was also an issue with this device not connecting to the app, uh, which was the, the blue light didn't come on. Um, restarting phone, restarting device, reinstalling, all that kind of stuff. So here's the deal. I want you to understand everybody, um, especially new folks, that there's a very specific sequence in which you engage the Healy and the app itself. So the sequence is without fail that you make sure that all your apps are hard closed, hard closed on your smart device, all the apps. Then you turn your Healy on. Right, Healy always comes on first. Then open the app in which you intend to use the blue dot or the pink dot. Then establish a connection. Okay, if you do it the other way around, if you turn the app on first and then the Healy, you're not going to get very good results. It it has to go the other way. There's a there's a reason for that. Um, and the Bluetooth chip that's inside Healy requires a handshake process in that order. Healy on first, app on second. And of course, nobody's on third because we're not playing baseball. <laughs> but remember that? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So you turn the device on before the app. Okay, so you're doing it right. So then it's a matter of um, the other thing was when if you've got, if you've done the sequence properly, what else is your in your environment? Do you have other Bluetooth devices anywhere? Um, the distance between the smart device and the hardware needs to be short. It's only got a 32 foot range. The Bluetooth transmission on the Healy device, the hardware is a BLE or Bluetooth low energy. So it doesn't have a very long range, it has a very low amplitude signal. So it can't be very far away. And if it's between walls, if it's in a different room, whatever like that, it's even shorter. 32 feet isn't very far. And if you're within walls or inside or outside of a car or some other physical obstruction even people can do it by the way you got a bunch of bodies around so that's going to deplete the signal and it's going to lessen your transmission range so um so yeah there you go just make sure you check your environment okay okay well i've had very few i think I think I can uh, validate one issue in which the Bluetooth chip was faulty um, and didn't function, but it would just not connect at all, not intermittently, and just not at all. Yeah, it's that's extremely, extremely rare. Yeah. yeah I, I, I had one ever in the two and a half yeah. years, and it wasn't, it was um, wasn't one of mine. Uh-huh. Okay. Wow, what else we got? Um, I don't know. It might be time to make some stuff up. <laughs> no, right? Anything you guys want to cover? I'm always interested in talking about, um, like one of the most popular topics is what's most effective, the microcurrent, the coil, or the blue dot, right? Or the information field. It's like I get that question all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We could sure we could sure talk about that. Um, because if we look at the modalities in which this system is built. It's built in uh, with the, um, the ability to run in three different ways. Uh, interface with the electric body, with the magnetic body, and the spiritual body, okay? Um, and in the, in the science world, um, you know, science can measure the electric body, the nervous system. Uh, they can measure the magnetic body. I mean, what do you think an MRI does, right? Um, but then when you start talking about the spiritual body, they go, uh, you know, go talk to the gurus right um or the mystics but we now know in quantum science that there is a a level of energy uh in which all things are tied in and connected and that's essentially what we are calling a, the the spiritual body or the quantum field and uh, so when we're working with uh, the electric body this is where the wires and the electrodes come in sticky pads or the wristbands uh or in other countries they have other ways of connecting but that's the electric body. 
and we're 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 honestly speaking to the electron flow um, with the conductive body, the body that actually conducts electricity. Um, and electron flow, if we understand electron flow, this is just like if you plug a lamp into the outlet and you turn the, the light bulb on, you have electron flow from the source, right? The power generator uh, to the bulb, which is called the load. And when you run the, the current flow through your body, the source is Healy, right? The battery in the Healy is the source of electrons. It's a big bucket of electrons. It's going to give to you, right? It's going to send them down the wires and it's going to send them down the one wire through the body around to the other wire and back in the Healy. It's like a loop, a closed loop system. And that's why it's called flow, electron flow through that system. And your body being the receiver or the load, like the light bulb in the other scenario. And electrons are essentially um, orbiting energy structures around molecules. And they move based on a, what's called a potential difference. So in other words, the battery that's in Healy has a positive and a negative pole. And so the negative pole will, will draw the electrons around from the positive side. So it's kind of cool how it literally draws it around the wires through the body and back to the battery. And the, the, the healing agent or the alignment agent um, is how those electrons are pulsed based on the frequency that the system is sending to you, pulsed. And that creates an actual frequency. And that pulse is um, how it differentiates is to what it's doing in your body. The various frequencies or pulses talk to, align, interface with, um, or balance all kinds of systems, cells, organs, emotions, um, even mental states within the body. It's amazing, right, how that does that. So that's what it does in the, with the electron flow and the actual um, connections with the leads. The magnetic portion or the coil, the coil essentially takes that same electron flow and runs it through two very distinct coils that are inside this housing. And you can see the coiling kind of the, the reflection in a circle within the underside of the coil. That's actually uh, two coils of wire that one attaches, one end of the wire attaches to one pin and the other wire, the other one attached to the other pin in, in a coil. When you have, a, and then it runs that electron flow through the coil instead of through your body. When you run electron flow through a coil, it creates a magnetic energy, like a wave. And there's two very distinct waves coming out of the coil. And when you have that attached to the Healy, the coils on the backside of the Healy right there, when you have it connected and you're wearing the Healy, those magnetic fields go out the front and out the back. So they're like this. The magnetic waves come this way and they come this way out the other side. So there's transmitting waves out this way. And so when you wear the Healy on your body, you are in the center of this wave propagation. In other words, the zero point field, right? Zero vector magnetic field. And those pulses, the magnetic pulses that are coming out of the Healy are at the same rate as the frequencies being given by the program. And you're in the center of that, receiving those frequencies magnetically. And so those are inducing, inducing the current into the body. So a little more subtle, but still giving it to the body. So now we're looking at two modalities of connecting to the body, either electron flow through the body or magnetic pulses inducing electron interface in the body, those two. The third one, which is the blue dot, that's intention. That's intention. And so it puts the client into the system, put your name, aspects about you as a coordinate. And then now you become the client. And then an analysis, a very elaborate analysis is done on that client based on the database you've chosen. And it gives you a result for alignment, not only in text form, uh, but also in um, suggestions for microcurrent or for, I should say, they call it vibration. Um, if it's, it's depends on the database. Some of those databases are telling you which microcurrent programs to run. The other ones are just telling you um, certain types of homeopathic remedies. And those frequencies are assigned um, by the analysis. And then the Healy through what they call vibration mode will send those into your field 
out of essentially um, the noise, ge- the frequency generator inside Healy, as well as as well as into your field. So it's intentions. Like when you put your attention on something, um, you've, have you ever put your attention on a friend or a family member or a child maybe, and all of a sudden they call you or 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 you see them? Yeah. So that's intention, and they're they're reading the signal through quantum entanglement. And then they're, re- they're responding to that signal by calling you. So Healy is doing something like that, but it's sending the signal out into your field and aligning you from that quantum field. There is a perfect blueprint to every single one of you. Um, we can call it the God blueprint. We can call it infinite intelligence. We can call it whatever you want, but there's a perfect blueprint that has no flaws, has no wounds, has no damage. But then that perfect blueprint is slowed down in frequency and vibration and filtered through this consciousness, AKA our mind, and then becomes form in our body. And it's our, it's our beliefs, perceptions, ego that shifts this, this perfect blueprint into a body that may be um, in some form of disorder. So when Healy does this assessment or this analysis and creates these frequencies, these frequencies are now putting you back in balance, back to that perfect blueprint so that, the content from the information field as it's coming down into your consciousness is now being uh, filtered and adjusted, or I should say amplified maybe even by these frequencies that Healy's putting out so that when your consciousness is, is starting to upregulate that into, into form, into matter, into body, um, it's a better signal, a better blueprint. And you can just let those frequencies rain down on your body from this device. So that's the other side. That's the third way. And then, by the way, the third way, there's no contraindicators, so anybody can do that. doesn't matter what kind of um, struggles you're having in the body. Okay. All right. He has a question here, a statement. Using the coil uh, makes effects more subtle, question mark, or stronger. It is a more subtle influence. It's a magnetic influence. Okay, so um, magnetic energy can be, well, it can be nulled by by a much stronger intention of your own. So in other words, you can have um, an intention of disorder, belief of chaos, a ego of um, of lack or, or, you know, disorder of any kind. You can have that built in so strong that the magnetic energy is not really going to get through. Now, no different than eating an organic, non-GMO, perfect gluten-free meal and then having a bad attitude and really getting no effect, right? It's no different. (laughs) Um, So we want to make sure that our ability to accept, believe, and surrender to the treatment um, is just as strong. So the coil is subtle. Um, It's, I mean, if we're going to say the least invasive, uh, if we were going to say microcurrent is invasive, it really isn't, but you're connected to the body. So yeah, you're giving that flow in. The coil is not even connected to your body. It's just magnetic energy being interfaced into the tissues. And our body is a a standing, walking, talking antenna. Um, It is is water and minerals. it's conductive. Uh, it is an ante- antenna. And if you don't believe me, just, well, don't do this, but have you ever touched a l- electricity, <laughs> a live wire, <laughs> you get shocked or go and touch a, a doorknob in the wintertime, you know, you get a little snap, a little shock or your car getting in and out of the upholstery, you know, you touch the frame, you get that shock. Yeah. Your body's conductive. That's electricity being discharged through your body. That's why it hurts. It's power f- discharge into your body. Um, it's conductive to ground. So in other words, where you've touched the electricity and where your other part of your body is touching ground, earth ground or some other grounded structure, like a frame of a car, that's the, the circuit in which this current is flowing through your body. And it's painful in some cases. So our body is a walking, talking, standing, operating and moving antenna. And when you have a magnetic wave that shoots out into the world, let's just say from a radio transmitter shoots out into the world and you've got, you've tuned into country music on your car radio. 
you tuned into that station, 104.7, whatever it is, the antenna on your car is the standing walking um, conductive material like your body that that magnetic wave touches, propagates across. And when a magnetic wave propagates across a conductor, it induces current flow. And the current flow is pulsed at the same content of the magnetic wave, goes down the antenna, decodes through your radio and plays your Willie Nelson, right? Whatever. Our body's the same thing. When, you, when the coil is transmitting magnetic energy, goes out into the world, where's the world? Well, you, because you're right there with it. And that magnetic pulse touches the body, the standing walking antenna, induces a current into the body. And what, what's the current information? It's the pulse of the frequencies the system is transmitting. And now you're receiving it. It trans transfers it into um, electron flow. That's pretty cool stuff, right? Now, you're all an electronics engineer. Go out and make a million dollars. You know, you now know wave theory. <laughs> all right. We aren't getting any questions, Jake. I know. I think everyone's just kind of wanting to hear random topics from today <laughs> everybody's just you know still on holiday right <laughs> yeah i think because yeah yesterday was a holiday it's kind of like a monday for people and not really in the, the tech tip tuesday um long, long things, weekend so. right long yeah. long weekend i love it it's okay we can <laughs> we can knock off early i mean i don't know i'm just saying we could talk about any other subjects is there anything you guys want to know more about I mean, put it in the chat. If you just want to expand on something you you may not understand, or you know, someone has asked you a question and you wish you could explain it better. Um, oh, status on Maghili. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, yeah, so the Maghili is another new entity that's pretty cool. Um, status is that uh, well, when are we talking about Jake? You can address this one. Yeah, well, I mean, it's this is the month where you know, July is the first availability. It's actually going into the production run is starting, I believe it is next week um, for the first um, several thousand units. And then from there, of course, we need to ship them to the hubs around the world. You know, Europe is easy because they're, they're manufactured in Germany there. So of course they're gonna have theirs first and then shipments will be going out to um, Asia Pacific and then also here in the US next after that. And then anybody that, um, there was a ton of qualifiers for the the he olympics so that's all going to be finalized later this month the the discounts that everybody got with anything from 12 and a half percent to 100 percent discount so a free mag healy for um, a good number of people as well and later this month all that will be communicated to everybody and then the people that earn the discount will have the first opportunity of course to buy the mag healy um, so all those details will be you know, communicated later this month as well, how that's going to work, how you use the, how you, you know, get the discount, whether it's in the shop or coupon code, um, whatever it may be, and um, the availability as well, um, once we get a little bit further into the, the manufacturing of this first batch of units. So, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's going to be a, an amazing thing. I mean, it's, 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 it's like a whole other, whole other level. And then these tech calls, you know, we're going to have, <laughs> The comparison that Ken just did, you know, with microcurrent versus the coil versus vibration. Now we're going to have the Mag Healy to kind of throw into that mix as well. So um, I know for sure we're going to have a ton of questions related to that. And we have we have a list of around 50 or 60 questions just we've that we've come up with internally that we're uh, working to get answers on as well. So we have, you know, so the plan is to have an extensive FAQ available before we launch um, the Mag Healy, of course, as well. And we can do some, certainly some trainings and tutorials and Healy for Beginners and Beyond and little segments like that as well um, as we get closer to the, the official launch and availability of it here in the U.S. Yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have another category to talk about when it comes <laughs> to the Mag Healy because of the various modalities and uh, even, you know, the, the Kozarev mirror and some of the technology around that. Yeah. We'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> Um, sure. so let's see. Great questions. Now we're getting some questions in here. Okay. Um, 
uh, talking about, uh, you know, hey, happy to enjoy the opening of Canada today. So yeah, where the soft launch was today. Um, so in your back office, you'll see um, the Canadian stuff. Um, there's a newsletter coming out. Is it, did it go out yet about the explanation on Canada, you know, switching your account over, that kind of thing? Yeah, that, I mean, that all that went out last week. It went to a specific group of people um, as well. And we've actually... <laughs> We've, we have around three or 400 accounts that have requested to be transferred from the US to Canada. So, and those are all, those all have to be done manually, the country change request, because there's a, there's an identity verification process as well and address verification. So that's certainly going to take some time, but um, that's why this is, we, we, you know, the shop is open for Canada, but that's why we're not, this isn't a grand opening because there's a lot of this administrative work, transfer work that we want to get out of the way, get everyone up and running and set up before we can have a, you know, a, a proper grand opening event later this year. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a big deal. I know we've had people in Canada that have been waiting for two years, uh, a little more than two years for this to, for this day. So uh, certainly a, a big day for them, even if it doesn't, if it didn't, wasn't accompanied by a huge grand opening celebration. So. It's great to, great to get them going. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So programs that you would rather use with straps and not coil question mark. So, um, there are the, the IMF or individualized microcurrent frequency programs are optimized for use with the coil. And you can tell which ones they are because the program itself, uh, when you go to the program page, you look at a specific program, uh, the top right of the um the center icon of the program there is a another little icon which is like the connect symbol three little circles uh, connected by a line that's the connect symbol um and so that means they're optimized for use with the coil and when you open a program it'll tell you it says right in the dialogue right there about you know if whether the polarity positive and negative is relative to left and right what the program is for the maximum duration, um, and then whether it's you know related, useful with the coil or not, and also frequency of use, like daily or whatever. So that's all there. When you go to the program, it's in the app. It's right there. It tells you that. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, can the Healy device be harmed by extreme cold temperatures or extreme heat? For instance, being left inside of a car. And uh, yes, it's got a hundred and oh, just went right on my head. One hundred and eight degrees Fahrenheit max. Um, I think it was forty five degrees Fahrenheit minimum, something like that. It's in your owner's manual. Go to the back of the owner's manual. Scroll to the back of the owner's manual. Yeah, it's, it's actually it's also on the Healy box itself on the on the outside too. I don't, I was going to, I don't have one here on my desk here, but I was going to show there. And then there's the specific temperature range for the Healy device. And then also a specific range for the adhesive electrodes that come in there as well. Like if you notice on here on the electrodes, there's a, there's a temperature, well, a little hard to see here, but there's a, there's a temperature range and a humidity range on there as well. It's plus 40 Celsius to plus five Celsius. So that's, like as Ken mentioned, it's around like 104 degrees to 41 degrees, and that's that's the the storage, the storage recommend recommendation. And we actually monitor that at our warehouses in Atlanta, Atlanta area, and near Salt Lake City as well. We both warehouses have temperature and humidity monitoring because because this is a FDA Class II device, we have to have records of all this stuff as far as the storage conditions. So. So I just grabbed the owner's manual while you were chatting about that. And so the, the temperature range is between 41 degrees Fahrenheit and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. That's safety okay. range. Or five degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. Uh -huh. That's the Healy, the Healy itself. Uh, relative humidity between 30% to 80%. And there's even an atmospheric pressure um, compliance, which is 700 uh hpa to 1060 hpa so it's in the back of your owner's manual um paragraph 7.4 which is environmental conditions you can take a look at that 
Mm-hmm. It's like the second to the last or third to the last page. So it's in that little owner's manual. This little guy right here, guys. I know it's not very thick, little thing right here. Um, but it is, it's got some great information in it. You know, definitely take 10 minutes and go through the whole thing. Won't take long. Uh, but yeah, so in relative, it's, we're coming into summertime. So this is a valid question, right? I said this actually last summer. We're coming into summertime. It's, you know, don't leave your pet in your car and don't leave your healing in your car, right? Um, <laughs> definitely gets too hot in there. All right. Let's see what else. When wearing the electrodes, does the current go through the whole body? I heard it was just. Um, Let's see that if wearing around your wrist, that it goes just through top half of part of the body. So remember that every every cell within your body communicates to the other and to the brain. The system is is always communicating, and it's it communicates through water, through the water of your body, uh, and specifically through that water is through photons. Uh, it, your body is a photosynthetic system. Uh, just like plants, but it uses water for that light energy to transfer or that information transfer through. So when you are running electrons, electrons orbit within every cell and they all communicate together. The way that the blue dot interface works is that the quantum sensor, which is in the back here, is what's called a random noise generator. It, it is influenced by consciousness and, and, operates on the electron field. Uh, there's a PN junction, which is two very distinct types of silicone. Uh, and when information passes through that junction, essentially it's exposing the electrons to the field. And so you might, you're the client on one side of the junction, the database on the other, and the bridge is connect, connecting to the environment, AKA you and all information on the electron field. Every electron, every electron, is infinite intelligence information so one electron just running the wristbands from one wrist to the other wrist running current flow through here is speaking to the whole body the entire body so if you were to take a voltage meter and um, you were to measure voltage through the body uh, you'd have to actually use a wave uh, an oscope to measure the frequency uh, and the amplitude, but you would be able to see a higher concentration of information between the wrists through the main upper torso to the other, but you would also be able to see information in your little toe <laughs> based on uh, that frequency uh, in, interface with the body because the whole body is influenced. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, another question Jim's asking, am I correct in understanding you can run the coil at 100% 24-7, 365 without fear of EMF overexposure? Yep. Yep. EMF. Let's talk about that. EMF exposure. Let's just talk about EMF. What's EMF? Electromagnetic frequency or electromagnetic force. Way back when it was called electromagnetic force because it was discovered that when you ran a current flow through a coil, it, it, emit, it emitted a, a magnetic field. Wow, that was pretty cool. So, okay, that's when they emit in a magnetic field. Um, if it was a DC or a direct current or a battery, so you have a positive and negative, electron flows at, it flows at no frequency. Magnetic field is just solid. Just, just solid. North and south, just solid, not oscillating. But if you ran a different uh, through a frequency, uh, some kind of frequency generator where you turn it on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, then that magnetic field pulsed. It pulsed exactly at the frequency of your on, off frequency, like a like we we call that a square wave, on, off, on, off, on, off. So the coil is doing the same. It's it's emitting an electromagnetic force or frequency, and. So, but that has given, it's been given a bad name because of the, the uh, frequency itself. There are some frequencies that transmit through water. There are some frequencies that transmit through free space air. Some that will go through mountains, around mountains, and bounce between the earth and the ionosphere. 
some that will go all the way to satellites, right? Some that will penetrate flesh, right? It depends on the frequency itself. So when Wi-Fi came out or some of these higher frequencies came out, uh, the gigahertz was a concern because it could actually penetrate the skin, the muscle, the tissues of the body and influence the cell. And that's true the, at, at high enough magnitudes. So in other words, you need some power, guys. You need some power to get it to actually penetrate anything or a, 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 a power with a exposure over time. So you take this uh, smart device right here and you talk on it right here against your head for say 3,000 hours a, or 3,000 minutes a, a month. 3,000 minutes a month, that 2.4 gigahertz signal, which is millimeter waves, transmits in through the skull. And the other side of the skull is like a dish. You guys understand like uh, satellite receivers and you see the dish up on the house? The dish is a collector of signal and it's shaped that way because when the signal hits the dish, it reflects it down to the the collector in the center. You see that little bar that's in the, in the center of that dish. It's, it's positioned strategically so that all of the signal that's bounced off that dish pinpoints the one spot that, that collector so that it can have a good signal to send into your, your receiver box and give you a television or whatever. So the skull, there's certain parts of the body that are dishes. And when you put a cell phone up against your head on this side, and the energy is going through your head and reflecting at different parts of the skull on the other side. It reflects to one spot because your head's the same shape. It takes that information and collects it to one spot in your brain. That spot is getting the highest concentration of millimeter wave. That spot over 3000 minutes a month, over 10 years of time is gonna decay. That spot is gonna have an issue. Okay, now what other parts are dishes in your body? Hips, shoulders, breasts, testicles, <laughs> other rounded surfaces, heart. So when you have a signal sitting against that space all the time, and ladies, don't put your phone in your, in your undergarments, okay? Guys, don't put your phone in your back pocket or your front pocket. That, that transmission, is consistent and usually if we're left-handed what hand do we talk on the phone with <laughs> right-handed what hand we always put it in the same pocket same chest pocket whatever that's consistent transmission of a signal that can penetrate tissue uh, don't do it <laughs> okay so but the body's resi resilient. It's, it's something that happens over time. You, you just take caution. And, and um, you know, if you're, if you're sitting under a microwave transmitter for decades, you're going to have an exposure factor that's going to be damaging to your body. Um, high power wires that go over your house. I mean, there's, you know, that kind of stuff. There's, there's emissions. Um, so, is this EMF exposure harmful over time? The Healy's transmission is, is very small. Like I said below, but before BLE, the distance into which it'll transfer or transmit is short. There's no power there. There's not enough power to actually get into your body. Like your cell phone, much more power. Right? Have you ever take your cell phone and receive a call? Run it by your speaker. Run it by your speaker, your radio or your stereo. Do it. It'll go. It'll induce a signal into your speaker. It'll hum at the frequency of the signal from your phone. Okay. What else we got, Jake? Anything? Does that a natural cycle question? Um, and you, you know, you and uh, Terry did an excellent overview on on natural cycle. Um, recently, so that was on, on What's Up Wednesday. That recording is available on our, our YouTube page, HeliAmericas.com. But the question was, and this came up actually during What's Up Wednesday, because when you first start, 
you run the daily stabilization program after the activation program each each time you you run the next the next cycle the next session question is when do you run the solar stabilization does it turn on by itself so it, it, it is it is supposed to if you look through the app manual that's available for the Healy pink dot app manual um, go to the natural cycle section it does say that um, after a period of time um, it will switch from daily stabilization to solar stabilization and as far as how long that is it's it, from what I understand it should be a couple of weeks um, into the cycle that it would switch from daily to solar um, I don't know if there's if it's an exact amount of sessions each time, or if it's, there's a lot of other factors that it kind of looks at of when to do, but according to the app manual, um, it, it will automatically switch in the Heal Advisor app module at some point from daily to solar. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty intuitive program. It's really cool. Okay. Um... Programs that are meant for both straps and coil. Example, I want to run seven to, eight pro seven to eight programs. I can only do three to four with the straps. How do I decide with straps or which coil? Mental job coil. That's a great question. Oh my goodness. So I like to look at things in terms of um, mass or wave versus particle. Um, what is it that we're trying to address? Is it emotional? That emotional is a wave that addresses the particle or influences uh, the, the, the mass or the, the cells. But if we're looking at the origin, we look at the origin of an emotion, it is the mind. And so the thought, and, and, and so what I like to do is run the coil on things that are wave related, wave related. And I like to run the, the wristbands or the sticky pads on things that are particle related, um, AKA if I'm working on a muscle or if I'm working on um, an intestine or a heart, if I'm working on a tangible particle, a cell system. Um, but if I'm working on a mental condition uh, or an attitude <laughs> or an emotion, um, or even the chakras. I like to run the chakras with the coil. Um, that's an, that's an energy influence. Um, I do that almost kind of 50, 50 though. Sometimes I actually run that with the, with the wristbands, uh, and run that right through my heart chakra sometimes. So I had to use that. I use that analogy, um, wave or particle. And when I'm looking at that, and to be honest, I actually use two Heelys and run both. <laughs> I will run, uh, if I'm doing my workout program, I will run microcurrent uh, on the muscle program while I'm lifting. And I will run the coil on strength program to enhance the signal of what kind of muscle. So I'm building strong muscle, right? Okay. So you can actually double them up. Um, and true three to four programs a day with microcurrent in basically endless numbers with the coil. But here's my advice, folks. Pay attention to your body. It's going to speak to you. If you feel lethargic and tired and dehydrated and, and anxious or even moody, you might need to back it off a little bit. <laughs> so let your body speak to you when it's, when it's odd, you know, you've maybe done too much. And definitely, definitely go ground yourself after every microcurrent program. I highly recommend that you ground, you know, 10 to 15 minutes after every microcurrent program. And if you don't want to go outside, you know, there's, there's, there's sheets and pillows and things you can get that actually plug into the circuitry of your house that are earth ground that you can sit on, wrap up in, um, lay on, whatever. So definitely ground yourself on a regular basis after every microcurrent program so that you can reset reference points. Okay. You'll get to be able to do different stuff. Your body is a adaptive engine. 97% um, of the genetic code is adaptive reading the environment. And so when you're running the Healy more often, the body starts to adapt to that, to the microcurrent. 
and you'll be amazed at what you can do, what your body will accept and, and allow. So, but pay attention, stay hydrated and stay grounded and move your body, by the way. <laughs> I've, I've, I've mentioned many times my self-care protocol. Uh, number one, hydration, right? Plenty of hydration. That's half your body weight in ounces of water every day minimum. Number two, movement. Keep the lymphatic system operational. You know, um, move that system and that fluid. That fluid's moved by your muscles. Uh, number three, grounding. Right. Number four, breathing. Make sure you're getting those full full breaths. Breathe fully, completely. Uh, number four or number five is to fall in love with life. That med mental attitude is so important create a love affair with your life. All right. What else we got, Jake? Anything else? There's a question here. This kind of leads into mag healing, I would say, but it says, not sure if this is where I can ask this. You can ask anything here. Uh, <laughs> doesn't mean doesn't mean we can answer it on, on the call, but you can ask whatever you want in the, in the chat on this call. But it's, can I run the Healy on water or drinks and or food? with the Healy and how would you do it? So there's actually the, the Mag Healy has programmed specifically for these types of, of things here. And there's actually 24 different programs in the Mag Healy app specifically for water activation, depending on what your what topic you're, you're, you're trying to address or what you need um, help with. And we're gonna, um, on one of the prior What's Up Wednesdays, I think Doc Steve went through a lot of these individually as well I kind of showed all those and we'll show those again on a, a future call too but 24 different programs where you can activate and inform water for specific use and then also as far as the food goes within the mag healy in in one of the atmosphere program groups there's programs specifically for eating food cleansing kitchen and pantry so this sounds exactly like what you're wanting to do um, as well. So if that's one of the, the big things that you're wanting to need assistance with or with your family, with your grandkids, uh, whatever it may be, the, the Mag Healy is designed. It, it, that's why the Mag Healy kind of opens up these whole new areas um, as well that we kind of haven't really touched much at all here at Healy. So, mm. Yeah, it's such a great thing. And, and so while you have your Healy, um, you can just run the coil. And remember I said the magnetic energy is being in, induced into the field. So you can run the coil. Um, I've also people uh, use the sticky pads. So mm -hmm. you could take the sticky pads um, and you could take the sticky pads, one sticky pad to two butter knives and put them down into a glass of water. Uh -huh. uh, and you can run the current into the water through the sticky pads um, into these knives uh, or, or any conductor yeah. uh, and then charge your water that way with those frequencies. And, uh, or you could just use the coil um, clipped it to the glass or next to the glass and mm -hmm. induce that signal into the coil or into the water with food. Um, you can do similar thing uh, with the coil, but the um, uh, food also needs water. So food that has no water um, has a different way of transmitting information. So in other words, uh, a microwave and, you know, it creates heat uh, in food. It's actually done by sending a signal from one side of the box to the other side of the box through what's ever in the middle, but it's the water that creates the resistance in the food to heat it up. It's the resistance of that signal moving from one side to the other that, get, that creates heat. You put a saltine cracker in the microwave, it won't heat up. There's no, there's no water in it to do that. So, um, so you need your food need not be dry. You're not going to charge up a, a potato chip right, or something like that. Um, but you can use the coil to send that magnetic energy into your food um, just by proximity. All right. I don't think we had some more questions. Is there anything that we want to lightning round real quick before we run? I think there's a, a good one here that's worth worth answering. Uh, so it says, when scanning yourself um, in the Analyze app, um, what do I think about? Um, you know, when you're you're setting the attention, do I think about what my problem is, or do I envision the perfect health state, or do I do something random like just count to five? 
<laughs> what uh, a great question. I love this question so yeah. much because, because the power of intention, the power of intention, just like I said before, you can eat an organic, non-GMO, full-on healthy meal and have the, an internal state or an intention of lack, and it'll negate all that. So what do you think about when you're in the state of, of, of healing? If you think about your suffering, you're putting all your energy on suffering, right? So what I suggest what people do is you, you be the person on the other side of your struggle. Who are you on the other side of the struggle? Who are you in the, status, in the, in the greatest state of being? Who are you? How do you dress? How do you speak? Who are your friends? Where do you go? Um, what's your abilities? Can I, can I run? Can I jump? Can I swim? Can I, all of those things that you're building, you're building a memory of the future and the mind starts to put information on top of that memory. And the better you get at creating it in the mind, the body doesn't know the difference between an experience that happens in a three-dimensional space out there in your world or one you make up in your mind. The body doesn't know the difference. So when the mind is on board with the treatment, the treatment expands a hundredfold. So what do you think about? Intention. Not Don't count one to five. No, that's, that's, that's better than thinking about the disease. <laughs> but think about who you are on the other side of your healing and live it, be it, experience it, feel it. And the, 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 there's a, a great uh, book called Feeling is a Secret by Neville Goddard. That's the secret. You embody the feeling in the body, the thought in the mind, and the two enrich the experience of the healing. And now you're healed. All right. What a great thing, I think, to stop on. But <laughs> thank you guys for all the, the, the great questions. Um, if you want to save the chat for your own, if you're on a computer, the bottom of the chat, there's three little dots there. You can click on those three little dots to allow you to save the chat. Um, if any of the answers that, uh, that, uh, were put in there by customer service would helpful, but, uh, there you go. Thanks guys. Thank you, Jake, for being here. Um, I so much appreciate you being here, Anthony too. Uh, thanks everybody for visiting this week. And of course we'll be here next week and the recording will be on the YouTube page. So stay tuned for that. And we'll see you tomorrow for the what's up Wednesday. Don't miss it. Uh, 10 AM, uh, Pacific, uh, 1 PM Eastern. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.